the end of these kind of events, we try to send people off in a non-dual manner. <laughs> uh, so that they don't feel too unhappy leaving Menla going back to the, to the machinery of the universe. And, uh, but, uh, but I don't want to start launch into a big thing. Dr. Indra will come in himself in a very short time. I have a question. So maybe a question, if people have questions. Yes, you have a question. What's the question? Yes, we're having a puja. Please speak very slowly <clears throat> and right into the mic. We're, ha very close, yes. we're, having, a, we're having a puja. And is that puja um, a fire sacrifice? Uh, the puja? I'm not sure how Dr. Nita will do it. Um, there's two pujas apparently today. That's how I got mixed up. <laughs> For a puja, this means offering in Sanskrit. So puja means. And um, different kinds of ceremonies. And what this first ceremony has to do with the flower um, uh, julen that he made yesterday, right? And uh, to, because in Tibetan medicine, medicine has three powers. It has the substance power, which is taken care of by mixing it in the proper way and picking the right ingredients and so on. Then it has uh, mantra power, which is involved in, you know, the, uh, oh, that's not here anymore. There was the, oh yeah, there, that one. You see they have that on a little tripod. There's a, there's, there's a dish, and then there's deities in the dish. And um, uh, it's like a, like a skull bowl, actually. And then the, the, it's put in there, and then the, the lama is sitting over on the side here. You see him, he's got his drum, and he's saying mantras. And mantras are putting mantra power into the pill, because we're all made of body, speech, and mind. In other words, we have a physical body, then we have a speech body, then we have a mental body, something like that. You know? And uh, all three of them are us. And then the mind power is by samadhi, and you know, by concentration. And so when you, so the pill is empowered, in other words, it isn't just a, it's sort of like a, a way of systematically making, um, embedding in the, in the medicine, the placebo effect, actually. You know, the placebo effect is one of the most powerful healing things on the planet. I don't know if you know that by studies and statistics. If people think something is helping them, then they're, they get a confidence about the power of their immune system and their body that's being triggered by whatever it is that they're doing, and then they do have a better result by quite a distance. You know? Nobody's ever figured out how to sell or bottle the placebo effect. <laughs> but in a spiritual tradition of medicine, the, the idea that uh, medicine Buddha, and then you see around here, uh, around here of this painting, you see there's all these different Buddhas, and uh, Padmasambhava is there, and this is a particular deity of Elixir of White Tara. And uh, usually Padmasambhava, here's Padmasambhava in his copper-colored paradise in Madagascar. And here's the Buddha of Long Life here. And there's Manjushri, the Buddha, Buddha slash Bodhisattva of Wisdom. And that's one of the medicine Buddhas. And then these are the five Buddhas of the five chakras, you know, they're on this one. And they're all, and then down here is the substance, you see in this bowl that you can hardly see, but it's meant to be like a skull bowl, and uh, on a tripod like that. And uh, so there, you see the little lines going from there. The Lama here is invoking, and he has a line coming from his heart, and it goes there, and it, each, each line is, putting in, is invoking the energy of the five Buddhas, and then they are sending, and then they, they are sending the blessings of all of these entities, these beings. You know, the different deities and uh, teachers and the tradition and so on. And so that's the mind power goes from samadhi. So the substance power, the mantra power, and the samadhi power are in a proper medicine. And uh, then it, it, it gets you on the subtle planes, it helps you on the different subtle planes. And um, actually another thing that they do in t traditional Tibetan clinics is that the patients often the ones more serious, like the inpatient, so to speak, but they're not necessarily, maybe they're in the neighborhood or maybe they get a place there. Now, they don't have big, huge hospital buildings. They did not traditionally, but uh, the monasteries they have. And um, they help make the medicine and they participate in the ritual where the medicine is made. And then you see, you see patients in a Tibetan medical thing, they have this long sack and the round pills that have been made and dried 
but then they have to be polished and they roll them back and forth inside the sack which polishes them. And they themselves then are taught a mantra or just a mani padma hum, which invokes the presence of Avalokiteshvara or the various medical mantras that they have. And they might be saying that mantra and they might be doing this and thinking about medicine Buddha so that they have a large, you know, the whole mind and body and then speech, which is sort of your concept, your idea, are all going with the substance power and intensifying it and making the person receptive to the impact of the, of the medicine power. You know? And uh, it's, really, it's really quite marvelous. It's adorable, really, it really is. And, you know, because there's all these things about, you know, people who live in communities and are very interrelated with other people, they support each other and so on. There's another huge bunch of studies I was reading recently about how people who are loners and don't socialize much have a much lower health uh, success rates in all kind of, they've made all kind of studies. And feedback from others and interconnecting with others gives people much stronger healing uh, power for themselves, actually. And so that's also well established. So, so they, it is a kind of thing like that, the healing thing. And it connects to the Medicine Buddha um, myth, you know, and then the iconography of the Medicine Buddha, and then the meditation and visualization. And then the human beings like you talk and Dengombo, or the presence of one's own doctor, and the lineage of doctors, that's also very important. So that in medical school, when you go to medical school, you, your courses, a lot of them have to do with learning to do the practice, being able to meditate. Uh, the, the good Tibetan doctor imagines uh, that they are one with you talk or one with the medicine Buddha, depending on what particular practice they're doing. They don't go and act like I'm the medicine Buddha or paint themselves blue or anything, but they are visualizing that themselves to avoid burnout and to create a field of calm with the patient and absorb, you know, you know, embrace the patient within that field and so forth. So there, that training is very much part of the medical training. And then again, compassion. If one is going into medicine for, with a wish for fame, status, or profit, one will be a rotten doctor, they say. And one's will will therapy will not be good, and one might, for some reason, maybe by good advertising, be, be successful somewhat. But basically, one, will not, one shouldn't do that. The only motive to be a doctor or a nurse or healing is the compassion, the bodhisattva mind, the consideration of others before oneself and all that. And that's a course. You know, that's like a major course in medical school before you go in and dissect corpses and deal with anatomy and biology and chemistry. That, that is a major, major thing. Then I think that Dr. Nita mentioned about the four different types of diseases of uh, problems. Did you mention that? Some of you probably already know that. You know, 404 major imbalances, and of the 404, there's 101 that are just what are called incidental, and they don't really require any medical thing, although they might require a little bit lifestyle change and dietary change, but they're, they, they don't require medicine. And then there's 101 that are affliction by negative spirits, and for that, then, the normal doctor will remand one to an exorcist <laughs> or another lama who will, or lamas in general who will do rituals and chase away whatever, like ghosts or whatever entity it is. And um, it's a little shamanic, and of course, Dr. Nita, especially being a nakba, that he's a specialist in that, so he doesn't have to recommend to anybody else. He knows about that. And, but they do normally. Then there's 101 that can be treated by medicine. And then there's degrees of the med, you know, external therapies, massage, cupping, blah, 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 acupuncture. And then finally it gets to like uh, teas, and then uh, decoctions, and then finally there are herbal pills, etc. And then the final 18th possible thing is some kind of surgery in some case or something like that. So there, that, those 101 that can be treated in that way by medicine, they say. And then there's 101 that cannot be treated. Uh, you know, they're going to be fatal in some way, and then they they want to sent to meditate and develop, a, you know, work on one's karma, and et cetera, you know, go through purification of one's karma, preparing to pass along. So that, did he tell you about that? That's, so they divide them that way. Then within the 101, of course, each, each one category has numbers of varieties, so then it becomes very complicated. But it's, it's very nice. One really nice thing, when I used to translate for Dr. Yushi Dundon a lot, in the 80s, and 70s and 80s, 
Uh, he used I, we used to go to conferences sometime with Western doctors, with Chinese doctors, acupuncturists, Vietnam, Ayurvedic, and so on. And um, they, a lot of them, actually the Ayurveda ones would be always after him for the urine analysis that the Tibetan medicine has, which is considered unique and very special with the way the Tibetan medicines have it, because it actually came from the Galenic tradition, from through Persia into Tibetan medicine. And, um, no, and, the, and also acupuncture doctors didn't know about it in China and India, and they used to ask him a lot about it. But anyway, when he would occasionally, he was very feisty, and he would get into debates with some doctors. And um, particularly, one doctor was like, well, you know, what is this with the five elements, you know, earth, uh, water, fire, wind, you know, and uh, space, you know, and your consciousness, six times six. six. And what is that? I mean, it's so simplistic. We have 220, 129 basic elements, and you know, we have this fabulous chemistry and analysis of the reality and blah, 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 you know. So he was like challenging the Tibetan doctor. So the doctor, the, the Tibetan doctor said, okay, yeah, you do that, and we can do that. If you take the, the five elements, and then each one of them has five subdivisions, you know, like there's something can be analyzed as a predominantly earth element, but then it has earth water, it has earth fire, it has earth wind, it has earth space. In other words, you multiply five by five, you come up with 25. Then you do again by five, you subdivide, you get 125. Then you go to 625. <laughs> and he was showing how you can keep multiplying, get more refined in your analysis. He says, but you can then also come back to five, he said. And whereas you guys, and he's talking to Tibetan, I'm translating, right? And he says, Whereas you guys, you have humpty dumpty the human being. <laughs> <laughs> and I was surprised, I didn't know he knew that expression in English. <laughs> so he said that in, it sounded like Tibetan. Chiranzo, me semjan deli, and humpty dumpty jetsa. Humpty dumpty, he said. So I'm saying, I'm saying, humpty dumpty. I'm asking for that. What does that mean? I thought it was Tibetan word. <laughs> no, he says Humpty Dumpty, the guy with the egg uh, going up. And he starts explaining, oh, right, Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> so, what he meant by that is that you guys analyze it way down. You have the T cell, and this and that, and then you have no idea how to put it together. Yeah. And, you know, whether someone should eat spinach or broccoli or whatever it is, you know, you don't know. That's so Because you lost the human being in all your analysis, he said. Mm -hmm. We are very for analysis, he was saying. We think that's brilliant. We like actually what you have done, and your chemistry and everything enriches our notions of chemistry. But we keep it where you can put it together. And this, to me, is the most important thing. For example, about diet, you, you, you saw, did he, did he talk about the six, uh, the six tastes? Do you all know by heart the six tastes? No. Yeah. yeah? You know, sweet, sour, bitter, astringent, and... Uh, uh, salty and, and um, you know, chili, you know, what do you call it? Hot. Right, there are six of them in there. And they're hard, complicated, the stringent and the sour, these are a little uh, hard to differentiate. And uh, uh, that's an amazing thing, actually. That, I'm sorry, I'll digress a little bit, but that's an amazing thing. But anyway, with the six tastes, each one is a combination of two elements, predominantly, right? Now, the elements, you also have to remember, that are themselves abstractions, and the Tibetan scientists are aware of that. In other words, what they call earth, it doesn't just mean dirt. It's like an atomic abstraction. It means solidity, the element, the aspect of solidity in anything. Right? And therefore, they're always combined with each other. Water means the cohesiveness in anything. Fire is the combustibility and transformability in anything. And wind, and that's why wind should never be translated as air, because by air we're thinking of a subtle substance that's static, but wind is defined only as movement. So it's really just energy. It's not anything that it means movement. Chala, you know, is defined yoga in Tibetan. You know, is uh, what wind means. And space is just where you know allows it the this opportunity for it to happen. And so they are abstractions themselves, but still they give you kind of a rule of thumb about something. You know, you feel the solid and the co and the and the cohesive. You know, and then those you have the the powers and you have the characteristics, right? And Seventeen and eight and so on. So, so when you do that and you know the taste of what you're eating, you begin to get a kind of intuitive feel about, you know, your your um, bile. Your bile is really fire. Your predominantly right. Your phlegm is earth and water predominantly, 
And sweet is birth in water, too. So sweet increases the phlegm, you know, and then you get, oh, this food will increase phlegm. You begin to get a feel of yourself relating to the five, through the five elements, to your environment, through your food, through even colors, etc. It's wonderful in that sense that, it, and it, it very much fulfills the idea that giving the patient a sense of self-awareness and self-confidence about their basic immune system, about the basic, you know, the balance of the thing, although within the imperfection of the samsara. In other words, the balance is always a little off, and so it's always a matter of, it's like surfing in your life, rather than wanting to find something that controls everything. Do you know what I mean? It's like an interaction, like it's a relation like that. That's a really good thing. For example, what are called the three humors in English, people say that, you know, bio, phlegm, and wind. That humor word is wrong, that comes from Greek medicine, and that might deal with bile and phlegm. But the Greek humors were bile, black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood. In other words, it means fluid. They didn't have the concept of chi. Pneuma, they did have, like pneumatic, you know, pneuma. But they weren't using it medically in the way that Tibetans do. So what those three things are, are actually called three ill, the same word for the word for illness. Ne. Dosha in Sanskrit, which means a flaw, three flaws. So health is defined on the ordinary level when you're not mobilizing your subtle body or you're not a Buddha or a Bodhisattva as the imbalance, as the, as the balancing of, of um, negative factors, actually, bile, phlegm, and wind, which, which if they are controlling you, you're not in good shape. So you try to at least keep them balanced so they can't, you know, one of them can dominate. So it's a different vision, you know, of what life is, actually. Everything is oriented toward developing enlightenment in the life. Anyway, I wanted to come back to the thing about the, uh, what was it? I, I had a good digression. Oh, yes, the six tastes. Aristotle said there are four tastes. I only recently discovered this. And Western science has been, had been going on until neuroscience on four tastes, based on Aristotle. Okay? And if you go to school, you learn there are four tastes, in the, like 25 years ago, or four, 30 years ago. Then, recently, neuroscientists, by observing what the taste part of the brain does about different things, validated one Japanese guy who the slightly rotten taste of some kind of weird fish, <laughs> which I think is astringent in the Tibetan taste thing, you know? It's astringent. And then there was one other taste that was also discovered by some French guy making sauces. <laughs> from burning things, you know, like a little charcoal it tastes, carbon taste. Umami, and so then the neuroscientists no. came up, they don't know the Tibetan thing, or Ayurvedic, they don't even know it still, nobody has pointed out to them. But they have decided to change their canon of taste to have six tastes. Based on neuroscience, they added two. Before the day, I guess they had sweet, sour, bitter, and salty or something, I don't know. No, they didn't have sour and bitter, they had sweet, sour, salty, and pungent, that's right, those four. That's what Aristotle allowed them. And they're just going, all the great modern things going on Aristotle, the four tastes until the neuroscientists and discovered the two that are in the medicine teaching from Buddha. <laughs> if you want to overturn a little bit your yeah. feeling of the march of progress. Right. <laughs> I love that. I was flipped out about it. The, the Japanese guy was some guy, he was like, you know, they have some funny fish, you know. And the Scandinavians also have weird fish. <laughs> smells and tastes really strange, but I think they're all in that area. That's a digression, I know. So, okay, so what was the question I forgot? I had an ancillary question already, but... Um, I answered the question? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so the pool, oh yeah, the pool job, that was what it was. So therefore, the first thing that Dr. Need is doing um, we, is... is um, is he's going to bless the flower uh, julian, you know, the flower um, protocol, fasting protocol. And, um, and that's a ritual to do that. It's sort of like that ritual, but not as elaborate as that. Because, you know, I remember a meeting with somebody in the, from the, one of the Merck company and saying that they needed to have in their factories, they needed to hire some lamas to come and do prayers over the machine. <laughs> Well, they're bottling pill machines, you know, invoking them with the positive energy. And they were like, huh? 
<laughs> so, uh, but they do that by their ad, all these ridiculous ads all the time. Yeah. You know that they really. Uh, my favorite one, though, for the purpose of happiness of people getting encouraged about discovering happiness, my favorite one is the Zoloft ad. <laughs> Does anybody know the Zoloft ad? <laughs> you ever seen it? No. Well, the Zoloft ad just proves that everybody knows that happiness is better in spite of the fact that they fear it and that it's illegal, actually. Jeff Sessions will arrest you if you run and announce that, that, that you're happy. He will, he will say, well, you must have been smoking something. Sunday is we're going to butt you. Okay. So, so uh, he's miserable himself. Well, yeah. That's the problem. You, know, you can look at him. <laughs> he's like, really? Uh, he just is like that. So... Um, in the zone of that, there's a lady in a kitchen, in a suburban kitchen, you know, like, quote unquote, a mother and a housewife. And there's a baby in a high chair, and there's some other kids of different sizes. <laughs> and she's trying to make some prefabricated ex frozen waffle that no doubt has <laughs> peanut jeans and sort of weird fish jeans in it. And the one thing is smoking out of the toaster, and the dog is, dog is, making problems, and the kid throws his porridge on the floor, and the husband is looking like he never heard of a cup of coffee, <laughs> and she's like, ah, like this. So it's like that. Then out the window there's a field, you know, grass field, because it's a suburban thing, a little kitchen window with the sink, you know, and you see out the field, camera goes out there, and you see there's these yellow flowers, like little whatevers, you know, forget me not, and then the yellow flowers pop off the stems, it's a special effect, and then they form the the word Zolo <laughs> in bright yellow colors, and then they pans back to the lady, and you have the idea she took one, of <laughs> and then she feels better, and bam, get your coffee here, kid, eat the oatmeal, dog, get out the door, and here's another waffle. <laughs> Everything's in, you know, I'm in, so I'm in charge. No problem. <laughs> so they're trying to sell it on the basis that everybody knows they're more effective and competent and they get things better and they can help others and they can help themselves when they are joyful and happy. Of course, then it's subliminally get the Zoloft, right? That's what you need. You need to depend on this substance to do it, right? It's terrible. But a lot of the people in the advertising agencies, I think, came to Buddhist studies classes in different colleges <laughs> when they were undergraduates. And so they're learning these things. So, um, so anyway, I, I hope everyone has been pretty happy here. Has oh, everybody yes. been happy? Yes. yes. That's the main thing at Mela, is to be happy. Have you been happy, sir? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Yeah, you enjoy Mela? Very much. That's nice. And uh, I'm very happy. And that's the, that's, the, that's the ticket, you know, <laughs> happiness. Everything could be solved by it, you know. But some people it's hard to imagine, you know. Like I was interviewed by the New York Times once um, with that sort of thing in the magazine they used to do where somebody stands up and then they take a picture of you against a white background and then they ask you a question. And uh, this lady who interviewed me knew that I had a problem with the Bush administration. Bush one, Bush two, and um, especially with Darth Cheney. <laughs> so they asked me, like, how did I deal with Darth Cheney? And I was saying, well, we have to oppose this kind of negative thing, one. I said, but two, we can't do it out of anger or hatred. We have to, we can't have, let them make us feel angry. We have to feel loving towards them. And so I told her, I use a Tibetan thing where I visualize Cheney as having been my mother. <laughs> and it's really a little difficult but I see him as having breasts, you know, and a little bonnet to cover his, like, his, like, aggressive-looking hawk-like face. And uh, then he's nursing me. And I'm the baby, like, looking up at Mr. Cheney. This, this woman has supposed to ask me a bunch of other questions, but she couldn't get off that topic. <laughs> she thought it was so strange being nursed by Dick Cheney. Uh, but Ricardita, I said, and I call her Ricardita. I think about her in former life. Uh, I haven't tried with Trump yet because I don't feel that mad at Trump. 
because I feel so sorry for him yeah. because he's such a mess. Of course, he's very cruel and he's doing all kind of terrible things. Everything he does is nasty and cruel to somebody. But, uh, but he himself is just lashing around because he's so has so deeply infected with the emotional plague, you know, Wilhelm right. Reich's idea of emotional plague. You know? Yeah. You know what that is? Emotional mm -hmm. plague? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like he's a tantric yogi. Wilhelm Reich Gela was a Nagba. Okay. He was a Nagba without knowing it. The reincarnation from Ablo of Nagba. He was German, but he, he was a Nagba in the 1910s and 20s and 30s. And uh, he, he, um, he recognized that, you know, mental blocks relate to, and traumas, arising from traumas. And you, of course, he was only thinking about this life because he was in the Western thing. But they, they embed themselves in the body in, in neural and muscular, musculoskeletal blocks, things, you know. And they, there, was no, there was no big yoga, you know, phase, yoga craze in those days, you know, 1910 in, in Berlin or wherever in, in Vienna. But uh, they'd heard sort of vaguely about that kind of thing, but they, they didn't know that. So, so then that he, he, he felt that when you're doing the talking therapy and people are remembering the traumas that they had, you know, that, which is that, that thing, that they should also work on the body. And it wasn't, it was like kunye, massage, you know, like, and that's where rolfing came from, mm -hmm. if those of you who have ever heard of that, you know. You know, you find out, like, kinks in the, in the system. And the emotional play has to do with the best version of analysis of simplest version of it is like military posture. Mm -hmm. Why are soldiers made to have this weird military posture? The posture is like ramrod straight, right? Pelvis is retracted like that, so there's an arch in the lower back. The chin is jammed down on the, on the throat area, and the stomach is sucked in so that the diaphragm is constricted. And, um, and very rigid, and then if, uh, I, was, I gave a lecture at West Point once, and they invited me to lunch, the most horrible lunch. They always want to get sacked, all sorts of those guys, oh. as I told them, but they didn't like it. They all told the officers, because they buy pre-made food from, you know, one of those big companies, you know, oh. one of Cheney's companies. Wow. It comes in little plastic and metal tinfoil things, and it's all pre-everything, and it's oh. so unhealthy. It's the worst. They're kind of filled with things. And they, and they can't eat it normally. It's like, <clears throat> and drink, and then they give them like soft drinks, and Coke or Pepsi, you know. They go, Pepsi sir, and then they hand oh, them Pepsi. And it's just, they're like made to be robots. But the reason for that posture is to shut off an inner streaming, is what Reich would say. Mm -hmm. To shut off sens sensitivity, your own sensitivity, where you can't feel sympathy with your enemy, you know. You can't feel... Like when they are frightened, you can't feel that, and you will be harsh and cruel. You know what I mean? It, it's a military posture like that, and um, and therefore, however, a person like that becomes very has a, a feels very deprived mm -hmm. and frustrated because they don't feel anything. They can't enjoy anything that they do, and this makes them cruel and sadistic, and um, and they have occasion. You know, then they 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 do rape or they do something. You know, but it doesn't help. You know, or they kill something. And, and or torture it, or watch it wriggle, and that somehow gives them a charge because they don't feel anything inside. It's a, it's Wilhelm Reich's analysis. It's so brilliant. It's like mm -hmm. their chakras are all cramped and shut off. You know? And um, but he didn't know about chakras, so he didn't mention chakras. And then if they open their this this posture, this play, emotional plane, what do you call it? They feel a streamings, and they have an experience of blue light. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. They see blue. His, you know, his patients when he worked with them and himself. And, and when you recover from the emotional plague, then you start seeing blue light. Energy. Like, blue light! <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even know what it was. Poor guy, you know, anyway. I'm, I'm, I know that's a digression. I was just holding it forth. Again, like, so now up to you. You're going to bless something. They were asking me, what is the puja? And what is the puja? What are we doing as a blessing of the puja and whatever? That was a question. So then I was r rambling around <laughs> in a happy way. But they're cheerful. Everyone's happy. Yes. Yeah. Thanks to you, Gilma. I'm happy, too, that you're here. But you, I'm not happy because you're leaving. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. Oh, not till tomorrow. Good. Yeah. You're here tomorrow morning. Yes, yes.
Okay, uh, I think firstly we quickly finish this uh, text. Oh, okay. So yesterday we learned about Za, the channels. Okay, so we have three main channels. Do you remember the three main channels? There's a central channel, which is the element of the neutral, ele neutral energy, neutral, right? It, it's holding the both qualities, hot and cold, neutral energy. And then on the right side, we have the solar energy, that's the fire element, and left we have lunar energy, that's the water element, all right? So we can say also three elements, the wind in the center, fire in the right side, and water in the left side, all right? And some text says for men and women different, or also for men, <coughs> uh, the solar is the left side and lunar is the right side, is, but don't worry, okay? Because every text or every tradition, they talk their way of uh, practice. But we are doing more medical style. So in the medical style, the, the solar, the heat is more coming in the right side. So that's why the aroma, the solar energy channel is always the right side, both for men and women. And then the channels, they have many branches. Do you remember how many branches, the right channel? 24,000. And left one? 24, also 24,000. The central one? 24,000. Together? 72,000, the basic channels, okay? And then, of course, there are also more <coughs> uh, branches of these channels. So all together, like, uh, there are millions of little channels. As I said uh, uh, yesterday, it's like our blood vessels, you know, the veins, arteries, and then if we count the capillaries, so we have millions of veins, okay? Something very similar. And then we talked about five chakras. Why we have five chakras? Five elements. Five elements. And then Tibetan Book of Dead is talking how many chakras? Three. Three chakras. Why? Because yeah, we need that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. And then there's some other uh, practices, they talk on the four chakras, okay? First of all, one, two, three, four. So they don't talk about the lower one, because they are monks. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> okay, so there's always a reason, okay? But if we extend the number of chakras, we have, it's called the 12 external chakras, like all our joints are chakras too, you know? shoulders and elbow, wrist and hip, knee and ankles, they are all called chakras. And then if you count uh, knuckles, there are more chakras. So in chakra system, like a root, you know, there's a root and then the branches, uh, the trunks, and then there are many little branches. It's like that, okay? Also the chakras. So in Kala Chakra, the 12 chakras are the 12 months of the year. Yes, yes. There's 30 days in each. Chakra. And yeah, this Kala Chakra Tantra, they have many very, very specific explanations about the chakras. I think Kala Chakra Tantra is talking six chakras, right? They talk six. Oh, yes, yeah, so in the central part, yeah. Yeah, central part, there are six uh, chakras according to Kala Chakra Tantra. And then there are many like chakra branches. And then also, like we did uh, yesterday, the Lama massage. We did uh, like A, A, E. E, E, U, U, A, A, do you remember? Mm -hmm. So according to Kala Chakra, every finger, there are many mantras, you know, like A, A, E, U, E, D, 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 like this. And the finger, they're full of mantras. Yeah, Actually, okay. according to this uh, system is our body, why it's called the Vajra body? Because this body is made of uh, mantras, made of syllables. And these syllables are created by the channels, okay? So it's very interesting. Our body has a, our body has an intelligence. So it depends where we go. If you go to a new place, for example, let let's say you go to Tibet. If you stay there for six months, so your channels are already changed. You know, your channels are automatically transformed into Tibetan channels. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe your head don't speak Tibetan, but your body speak Tibetan. Do mm. you understand? It's like a body language, it's very interesting. So that's why language is not a something learning by our head or memorizing. Language is a something to deal with our skin, with our channels. And channels, the, uh, I think because of the vibration of this area, so the channels, the, they re reorganize their forms, you know. When they reorganize their forms, and then we can speak different languages, okay? 
So that's the body's intelligence. So that's why it, we call it the Zanjurna uh, Nagjur. It means if the, if channel changes, then our speech changes. It means we can change our language. Okay. So I have to come here more. If I stay here for six months, then maybe my body speak American English. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too short down here. I'm getting it and then I lose it again. So my body is constantly changing and changing and changing. Okay? So my experience, this happened to me as an experience in Italy. You know, when I went to Italy, I didn't want to learn Italian language because my English was already bad, you know? I thought it's better I just learn more English than Italian. But then after a few months, I met some Italians, you know, Italian party. I went there and party. Oh, Italians are talking this and that. I thought, oh, I know this language already. <laughs> I didn't study, but somehow my body saying, you speak this language, you know? Right. Then I said, then I was thinking this story. I thought, this is something right, you know? Just eating pasta and spaghetti <laughs> and a little bit of vino rosso. <laughs> and then I went to an Italian language school, uh, like two hours every evening for one month, and then my Italian was okay. You know, I, I never had any stress and pressure for learning Italian. My Italian is not perfect, but it's okay for communication. So that really, for me, was an experience. How our body can learn the language. <clears throat> okay? That's because of channels, because our channels are constantly changing or transforming. But the text says it normally takes six months, half a year, to transform everything, okay? So if, you're, if you want to learn new languages, you should go to that place. Find a Ruski. The best Russian you can learn only in Russia. Okay. And then we have uh, Vajra speech, Lord Jenga, Vajra speech. So that's about, uh, uh, that's about Lung energy. We talked to that already, and page number six, we have the five root wind, okay? Five root. So one is the life-sustaining wind. Where you can find that? This life-sustaining wind is very similar to the brain function, okay? Life-sustaining. So also the name is very interesting, life-sustaining wind. So if we don't have this life-sustaining wind, it means we are dead. Something very similar. And the Western medicine says when brain is dead, so that's the like clinical death, right? Maybe our heart is stopped, the breathing is stopped, but brain is still functioning, it means we are not dead yet. Right? So the definition of death in the Western science is about the brain. Something very similar in Tibetan medicine. Once our this life sustaining wind is gone, not functioning, it means this body is finished. Okay? But then this uh, energy, the wind energy, will continue the journey. You know, it's like uh, ejected, go out from our body. But it, this energy will continue uh, with our consciousness in Bardo, after life journey. Okay? And we also, it's, it's interesting, even we don't have this body, and the energy, this energy is connected with our consciousness, and that's the, the force, that's the energy that our consciousness can travel. It's like a vehicle for our consciousness. Without this energy, our consciousness stuck. There is no motion. And then a uh, second one is ascending uh, wind. So that's about breathing, okay? So if you think about uh, breathing exercises or uh, me mindful breath, meditation, or chanting mantras and everything, it's connected to this ascending wind. We are training with this ascending wind. So if you are very good for training the ascending wind, and then ascending wind can affect the upper wind. It means the life-sustaining wind, and can affect the next one, is all-pervading wind. That's, the, that's in the heart. So it's very interesting, you know. If you are able to control your breath, okay? If you are able to control your breath, you can control your heartbeat. Heartbeat is very fast, you know. You control your breath, Heart is like this, you try, you know, then <laughs> normally this is how it's happening, right? <laughs> so heart is beating, you control your breath. Mm. 
and you really do it again and again and then heart beats slow and slow and slow. So it means controlling the descending wind and that controls all pervading wind, that's in the heart. And sensing also agitation or nervousness in the head, we can control the life-sustaining wind, all right? And also it's interesting, life-sustaining wind is connected with memory. If you think you have bad memory, you have to do more breathing exercises. So if you're able to control the ascending wind, you can increase your memory. Do you understand? So it's a very, very interesting, this one, ascending, you know, ascending. When we chant mantras, it's working with ascending wind. If there's no ascending wind, we can't speak, right? If there's no ascending wind, we are not breathing. If there's no ascending wind, uh, how do you say? Our heart and brain is not connected. So something very interesting, right? The first one is the brain, life sustaining, all pervading is the heart, and ascending one is in the middle, that's the breathing. So it's a bridging heart to the brain. Mm -hmm. This is the main reason why breathing meditation, breathing exercise is very important. Yes? Yes, please. Is it true that the um, outward yes, it's true. that the outward breath controls the heart? I was told that by some med students. What's that? I couldn't hear. The, uh, is it true that the outward breath controls the heart rate? I was told that by some med students. So that's correct. The breathing out. Breathing out and holding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to this system, that's not so good. It's better inner holding, not out holding. Okay? Because if you do the outer holding, you have to train yourself first. In the beginning, if you do too much outer holding, it can be, it shortens your life. <laughs> inner holding increases your life. Outer holding, if you are not ready, it shortens your life. Okay? You know why? Because we have five chakras, right? So this chakra is white, the white, and when it's something very interesting. <clears throat> I think medical science always says, you know, the breathing is only a function of this uh, respiratory system, you know, the lungs and, you know, bracket and these things. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Tibetan system also always says the breathing, it's a, you know, it's a very deep breathing. Our brain is breathing, our lungs are breathing, our heart is breathing. Our digestion system is breathing, and our even genitals are breathing. Five chakras, they're all breathing together, okay? Mm -hmm. But now there's a new scientific research said, when we breathe in and out, entire our body is breathing. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to the Tibetan yoga breathing. We have one breathing, it's called the rainbow breath. So you have to imagine like you're breathing, your entire body is breathing. All the rainbow goes inside, except all the rainbow goes out. Okay? All our pores, millions of millions of pores, they are all breathing in. This, all the, the, you know, all this uh, air or the, uh, the, the rainbow light goes into five chakras, and then five chakras are coming out. Okay? So that's not depending only our nostrils and mouth. So that depends in our entire body. So this is the recent the research is something very similar to that. Really interesting. And so that's why our breath is connected with the heart chakra. This is the white one, and this is the uh, red one, fire element, water element, fire element. Which one is this one? Blue. Space element, and this? Earth. Earth. This is the yellow, and this one? Wind. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can I make one last That's correlation? That's a Russian answer. Did you tell you always the opposite? <laughs> um, okay, sorry, sorry, I didn't finish. So that's why if you hold the breath, we are holding the element energy in our five chakras, okay? Inner holding. Of course, we focus here, actually not only here, we are holding in our five chakras. So external holding, what is happening when you accept? This. So all our elements, they go out and then they stay outside. <coughs> but if they stay too much, some of them, they evaporate. And then you cannot take back anymore. That's why it shortens the life. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. 
So therefore, first you have to train yourself for inner holding. If you are very good for inner holding, and then you are ready for external holding. And then you can extend your life. Okay? So I know some Indian yoga, they teach you in the beginning external holding. But according to this Vajrayana system, it's really not good. And when I have learned this system uh, from my teacher, Kambo Toruchena, one of the best Tibetan Buddhist master and greatest Tibetan doctor, he taught us about this. Uh, what was his name? Kambo Toruchena. Todu? Toruchena. Toruchena. Toruchena, yeah. Many years ago, I had met his holiness, Dalai Lama, and I told him I'm working with Tibetan medicine. He asked me, who's your teacher? I said, Toru Tsenam. He said, wow, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very, very famous doctor. One of the, okay. yeah, most, uh, you know, <clears throat> great, uh, Kamba. Kamba. Oh. He's from Kam. Okay, he gave us this teaching, Vajra body. And also normally not so easy to receive teachings on, you know, this Tibetan Vajra body teaching. And he really told us this, this part very precisely. And that's why he think also why if you do too much sport, that shortens our life, you know, and many sport people, they die suddenly. He think we lose this essential, you know, chakra breath. We are putting out more. Putting too much out more and less intake. So that's like affecting chakras. Once, one day if chakras, they lose the power and then and we die, we lose the, our balance. <coughs> mm -hmm. What about heliotropic breath? Uh -huh. Heliotropic breath? How? The heliotropic breath, like... <sighs> Hyperventilating. No, but it's when you're doing rebirthing, like when you're doing like a... It's, it's a meditation. <clears throat> I think this kind of meditation needs a preparation. Mm -hmm. That's all about this. That's why like a Pumba Jan, you know, you know that you can hold all your essential energy here, and then you do this once. <laughs> because the base you are holding, you are not losing. Okay? So we call it, uh, in Tibetan yoga, external holding is called the catching the moon. Internal holding is called the catching the sun. So first you have to work with sun. Your sun is okay, you can catch the sun, and then moon is easy. So I think this is, yeah, something important. And uh, Could I ask one more question about the breath? Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, the outward breath, we were trained in Nejong Yoga, right, this week to exhale quickly. <laughs> is that because you want to shorten the duration of the out breath? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, thank you. You got it. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're so smart. Ah, yes, you have an Italian wife. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are eating good food, you know. <laughs> the best. Okay, all pervading wind, and then we have fire company wind. So, okay, well, I call it the metabolic wind. That's in small intestine. Our digestion, small intestine. And then descending wind, okay, descending wind, that's for excretions. For colon, for rectum, and urinary bladder, and so on, okay? But it's very interesting. I told you about the stress, right? So you know what I think is stress is connected with the first wind, life sustaining wind. Okay. Which one? So Zen Lung, life sustaining wind. Okay. Stress is connected with this wind, and this is like the root for other four wind energies, okay? This is the root. So it's very interesting. When you experience the stress, what happens with your breath? You change your breath, right? And when you are stressed, what happens for your heart? Mm -hmm. Again, it changes. When you are stressed, what happens for your digestion? You don't digest, right? Yeah. Or you get cramp and you know this and that. And what happens for descending wind? <clears throat> or you poo too much or you don't poo. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting, you know, the, how the stress reaction is happening in our body to make connection with the five root winds. Right? And according to many researchers, they think more than 60% of both mental and physical disease today in our time, they are connected with stress. Stress-related disease. More than 60%. Can you imagine? Both mental and physical. 
So that's why, you know, Tibetan doctors, if you go to see Tibetan doctors, it's, oh, it's your wind problem, it's your lung problem. Lung, 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 wind, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And then, if you go to Western doctors, they say, oh, it's your stress, it's your stress, stress. So something similar. I think stress is really, it's a reaction of this lung problem, and especially it's affecting this one, okay? This one. Mm -hmm. And what is the best antidote for coming down this one, the life-sustaining wind? What's the best antidote? Sleep is good, warm oil, kunye, horme, massage. Are you receiving massage here? And Mahasuka? Yeah? How was it? Extraordinary and changing. It's, oh. okay. um, I had two massages. The last two hour one changed me. For, oh. the, good, for the better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, great. Good. Uh -huh. So kunye, actually Tibetan massage, kunye is one of the best <coughs> external remedy, external antidote for lung, mm -hmm. pacifying all these lungs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you don't do kunye, kunye is a full massage, then there is another simple therapy, it's called the horme. Okay? Did you see the little bowl, the little bowl in a deep in hot oil and then putting on your palms and salt and head, there are five points, it's called the horme. Okay, and uh, I call it the, one of the best Tibetan anti-stress therapies, anti-stress therapy. And ancient time it's called the, the therapy of Mongolians, okay, Mongolians. Because ancient time, they, instead of using the cotton, they used the felt, you know. Mongolians, they're using the felt for making their yurt and clothes and their boot, everything is made of felt. And um, so they use this felt and mix with herbs and dipping in the uh, hot butter, you know, old butter, warm butter, and then they put it here. And it, it's one of also best for sleeping remedy. Especially elderly people, when they have sleeping issues, you do this, they will sleep like a babies. Oh, yeah, really? you Today the baby, they don't sleep, yeah? <laughs> 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 they sleep like a stones. Uh, it's a really good therapy, all right? So uh, crown of head and palms and soles of feet. Yes, yes. I call it uh, uh, a Genghis Khan secret therapy. <laughs> Genghis Khan. <laughs> right? Genghis Khan, you know, he, in the daytime, he was always fighting. What he was doing in the night? Making, making babies. babies. <laughs> That's all about Genghis Khan. Fighting, making babies. Fighting, making babies. Making babies, fighting. Day and night, day and night, right? But uh, how, how it's possible he got so much energy and power because of this therapy, Horme. We call it the Mongolian Moksubushan. Okay? Mongolian Moksubushan. Horchimetsa. When I was in Tibet, I didn't use that much and I also didn't know it was so effective. Okay? And the text mentioned many times says, do Horme, do Horme, because I thought it's too simple. And problems are so complex and therapy is so simple. I always thought that does, doesn't work, all right? But now I'm really, really impressed of this therapy. I'm really, really, really impressed with this therapy. You know, even one uh, cancer patient, one Italian patient, <clears throat> he was late stage of cancer, lung cancer, metastasis, he had five operations, and there is no hope for life, he was dying. But the problem is he had so much pain and emotional disturbance, of course, and also insomnia. He couldn't sleep at all. So, like 24 hours of medication, morphine and sleeping pill, tranquilizers. Morphine, tranquilizer, sleeping, sleeping pills, okay? Injection, constantly. So when his wife invited me there, I thought, okay, you know, we can't do much. We cannot do massage because he's full of scars, operations, you know? And wherever you touch, it is full of pain. Because I really felt very bad, you know, to see the patient is suffering so much. And then he likes the morphine. They inject the morphine for two, three hours. You know, it's a drug. And he is relaxed. And then when morphine is finished, then pain starts stronger than before. So then I thought we should try something very simple and to see it's work or not. So I, I did the hormone. Okay, I, I couldn't touch because full of scars and it's very complicated, you know. For me, a little oil and massage and this and that. And next day his wife called me, he said, wow, 
First time he didn't have pain after your therapy, and first time he fell asleep without medications. And next day he wake up, he said, oh, I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I told the one my student to do this therapy every day for him. So he did, and then he stopped the morphine completely. No morphine, no sleeping pill, no tranquilizer, only hold me. That's really and, great. And later, of course, he passed away in a very peaceful way. And the family was very happy because the family member didn't want to see him. They knew he's going to die, but uh, to see his suffering is something so, you know, unbearable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm an external person. When I saw that patient, I said, oh my God. Yeah, the solution was simple. And that was really, that was, uh, for me, was a very important, uh, how do you say, experience. Then I thought, oh, this whole me is something so simple, <laughs> practical, but it's so effective. Then I tried to use it for other patients, it works very well. You know, for kids, for adults, and for elderly people, it's for everyone. And it's so simple. So what do you use to... We use a nutmeg. Nutmeg? Nutmeg powder, nutmeg, and clove, uh, ginger, aniseed, four types of powder. Nutmeg? Nutmeg, uh, clove, nutmeg, clove, uh, ginger, aniseed. You know, also we add the garlic, but some people, they don't like garlic smell. If people like garlic smell, we add also garlic powder. I see. And then we make a little, how do you call it? The pouting together is making like a it little ball. paper like that? Uh, yeah, normally it's cotton in the cotton. Cotton. Yeah, in cotton. The That's a poultice. And cloth, yeah. Right. In the spot it's cloth. Like this, and then you dip in the hot, uh, hot oil. Uh, uh -huh. Sesame oil. What kind of oil? Sesame oil. Sesame. Mm -hmm. Sesame oil. And then here. You know, it, 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 it can be it? very hot, so How you long? have to be careful. Dip in the hot oil and here. And then massage a little bit, and again, and then. when it's not so hot, then you put it there, and then you just massage, moving it. But on the feet too? Yeah, yeah, on so here, like two, three minutes, two, three minutes, and two, three minutes, two, three minutes, two, three minutes. About 15 minutes, it all takes. Oh, okay, That's five it. places, three minutes each. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then you do massage a little bit. Okay, you try. Try, try it out. Mm -hmm. I really like these things, you know, the simple methods we should try out, okay? Easy to try, it has no much side effect. The only side effect is don't burn the skin, okay? Even <laughs> if oil is too hot and this and then it burns it. Be careful for the temperature, you can check it. But in the beginning, it's very hot, you just do like this. No, just touch a little bit, little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay? So something very interesting, you know the little babies, what they like to do with their hand? They like to hold your hand, right? They grab your hand, why? Because this is the point, you know? Something touching here, they feel calm and they feel, you know, secure and they are kind of relaxed when they touch here. Mm -hmm. Mm. So the babies, they know this is an important <laughs> point. Sometimes. Uh, Sometimes I think, uh, yeah, also the Jesus stigma is here, you know, this is massage point. Some, some Christian masters, they get the stigmas, right? Stigmata. Yeah. Yeah. What? How do you call it? Stigma? Stigmata. stigmata. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Christian, yeah, stigma. stigmata. Stigmata. <coughs> some masters, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, maybe, I don't know, all the uh, bad karma is coming out from here. But, but it's a very, very powerful point for really relaxing and anti-anxiety, okay? So it's these five doors, these five points are relaxing this one. Life sustaining, life sustaining wind. So if you massage here, the energy is stimulating here. You massage here, energy is stimulating here. You massage here, it's stimulating here. Coming down the life sustaining wind, it's the root and then all other wind energy comes down. Mm. That's the thing, okay? Yeah? So, what is the root cause of distress to begin with? If these three mental poisons. All three? Yes. What's that? The root cause of stress. Oh. I said three mental poisons. 
First is ignorance or confusion, delusion, right? Because we, we, it, I think it's like this. Everything starts from, everything starts from confusion or delusion, right? We want, and then second is from desire, attachment. And the, the main cause of stress is, I think, that the real reason is we want to do so many things. Right? We want to do hundred things in one single day. And, you know, sometimes we don't know that we can't do it. You know, that's why I'm saying it's ignorance, delusion, we are confused. Sometimes even we know that we can't do these things, we want to do, that's called stupidity, right? And then at the end, we can't finish hundred things in one single day. Of course, then, you know, we have the desire, we can't stop our desire, craving, craving, craving. We want, we want, we want, we want, we want, right? Non-stopping want and want and want, and we can't finish, and then what happens? Then we are angry. Then we get angry, okay? So first we want it, and then we get angry, and then we are confused. So first we are confused, we want it, we are angry. So that's why I really see these uh, three mental poisons, you know. Sure. These are the root cause of, uh, how do you say, root cause of uh, stress. And I'm, I'm saying this especially the chronic stress, you know, chronic stress. Okay? Especially chronic uh, psychological stress, mental stress. All right? Like one young uh, Ukraine girl, she was so stressed and she has panic attack and she was a very smart uh, uh, college student. And then she told me she has too much stress and she can't study and she can't concentrate and this and that. So I just ask, uh, asked her a very, you know, she was going to therapy, so many things, nothing worked. I just asked her simple question. I said, what is your dream? What do you want to do in your life? She said, oh, I have so many ideas, so many dreams, so many. I said, that's the problem, desire. You know, you are one person, but you want hundreds of things. At, 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 at same time. And then I said, can you make a list? She said, oh, there are too many. I can't make a list. I said, you have to make a list. <laughs> because that's, that's the origin of your, how do you say, your stress and this, you know. And then she said, okay, she made a list, like 20 lists, you know. Then I said, okay, make it 10. <laughs> then I helped her to that 10, make it a 5. And then the 5 reduces the 3. I said, now you see, you have three main goals. You have three main goals very clearly. If you achieve these goals, others are connected with these things. I said, just make simple your goals and ideas and dreams, you know. We can have many things, but in a smart way. So it was a simple method, and then all her stress was gone. She could study, she was happy, and she finished her college, and she became a very good architect, you know. So, that's why I really believe, you know, we have to analyze the root cause and somehow it's always connected to one of these three mental poisons. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore I wish, you know, you guys can learn more about the inner mental poisons. That's <laughs> professor's job. <laughs> My job is massage and therapy. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, page number seven, we have five branch winds, five branch winds. <clears throat> so that's the connection between, uh, what do you say, sense organs and inner organs and so on. <clears throat> okay, so that part is not so important, we can skip that. And then the Vajra mind, Dorje Yit, essence energy, Tigle. Do you remember about the Tigle? Yeah. Did you experience Tigle? Okay, yesterday we did the love massage. <laughs> that kind of feeling, that's a called the tigle sensation, tigle experience, okay? Tigle experience. And something very interesting, when you are unhappy, when you are sad, and especially when you are depressed, okay? Then you don't feel tigle, you don't have this feeling of pleasure, or joy, and happiness. You know that, right? And that's why, you know, some depressed people, they say the main symptom is they feel numbness. Everything's numb. 
Okay? If you touch here, you don't feel it, like numb, numb. The skin is numb, and the feeling is numb, everything is numb. And that's why some depressed people, they want to cut themselves. They cut. For us, it's something painful and aggressive, but for them, they, you know, they know everything is numb, they don't have feeling, but if they cut, then they feel the pain and bleeding, and then they know they have a feeling, and then they're happy. Hmm. Do you understand? So that's like, I think it's a very typical, like the channels are completely blocked, you know? Channels are blocked, because channels are blocked with tension or whatever these things, and then energy is not flowing, and then tile is blocked. When tile is blocked, it means there is no feeling, no sensation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I suggest this lung massage, some, you know, like an antidepressant. In some cases it works. Of course, in the beginning, you know, the, the, some very, very depressed people, they don't have much feeling. But if you repeat it again and again, sometimes it works very well, okay? So that's, uh, yeah, <clears throat> that's about the tingle. This is uh, like a superficial tingle, okay, when we talk about the tingle. This is a kind of superficial, like, feeling, but even if it's a superficial, it's good, you know, it's important, okay? And sometimes you don't have feeling, you know, there's no much feeling in your body, and there's no much feeling in your mind. Your mind is kind of, uh, how do you say, turned off. So everything is bad and negative, and you're sad, and your body also, I don't know, like a kind of, you, you know you have a body, but not enjoying with your body, right? So in this case, it's good to, to do love massage, because then at least you feel your body. You know that your body is a little bit ticklish, tingling, and something is this and that. You repeat it more and more, so that helps the relaxing the muscles, okay? And then the channels, they start to open, and then energy flows, and then the tingle spreads everywhere. Tingle, like this, tingle is moving. Mm -hmm. that, that's a superficial tingle, but it's important, okay? So then what is a profound, a deep tingle? And we can see it here, um, page number eight. White and red essence. White tingle and red tingle. That's a deep tingle, okay? That's a deep tingle. White tingle, tingle carpo and tingle marpo. So where these two tilles are coming from? The white tille is coming from, you know, they're kind of genetic, okay? They're kind of genetic, both tilles, but they don't carry any genetic disease, all right? These tilles, they are the essential tilles, they are free from sickness. They are genetic, but it nothing to do with, uh, how do you say, genetic disease. Do you understand? I think that's important. So. That's why we call it essence, you know, in our body, of course, you know, many physical parts like our blood and muscles, body tissues can carry genetic disease, right? From parents, you know, grandparents, whatever, family genetic disease, they can carry physical parts. But energy level, this tingle never carries any genetic uh, disease, okay? But it is genetic. The white tingle is coming from father and the red tingle is coming from mother. That's why I told you, father is the moon, mother is the sun, okay? Mother is the sun, so mother's own, the red tingle is connected with the heat, with, you know, with the heat, and with, uh, uh, how do you say, with the heat and with the fire, like the sun, you know, the, the heat and the uh, uh, movement, and then the father is more like a moon, normally it's like calm, calm state and the bliss. Joy, joy feeling is from the father part. Okay, so that's we can call it, it's a deep tigle. So one is located here in the tip of the, the central point. The, this white tigle is here. And then the red tigle can be under the navel or can be in the lower, uh, the base, base chakra, okay? That depends on the meditations. Like uh, if you do tummu meditation, the tummu, you always visualize here under the navel, four fingers below the navel. You have to imagine this little fire and that's the red tigle, the red energy, okay? 
And then there are some other practices. There is a karma mudra exercise. You have to visualize that clearly in your genitals, in the lower chakra, okay? And the white one is always here. And so uh, these two tingles are, it's really like this, you know, this in our solar system, okay? In our solar system, in our planet, we have a life. So this, our life, in a, in a very simple question is, in this planet, we have a life. There are many different kinds of lives, but all lives are depending in the sunlight and the water element. Right, sun and water, they are, they are depending only on two things. If the sun is too close, there is no life. If the sun is too far away, there is no life in this planet, right? So the solar, uh, what do you say, the solar planet, the sun's distance for our planet is perfect. Okay, the same way the moon's distance to our planet is perfect. And you know, sun, the planet is 400 times bigger than moon, but if you look from here, they look the same size, right? Mm -hmm. So actually it's like perfect uh, distance, perfect karmic distance. And because of these two perfect distance, we can have a perfect life in our, this planet, right? So if anything happens with moon or sun, and our, this life will disappear immediately, in one instant, right? If the sun explodes, we will die in one instant, that's for sure. So something similar, this is the moon, the water energy, and this is the sun, the solar energy. Okay? And then in, in our body, there are so many stuff, you know, organs and microorganisms, bacteria, and we, bacteria, we call it the sin, you know, Tibetan medicine mentioned already about bacteria. It says we have like hundred or thousand different types of sins, bacteria, this and that. And uh, this, it says they are eating each other and this and that. Okay, there are many explanations about that. So all this life is based because we have sun and because we have moon, okay? So it means we are alive because of our body temperature and because of our water elements. So two essential, uh, what do you say? two essential points. If our temperature goes too high, we will die. It's like the sun is coming too close us and everything gets burned, right? So our temperature goes down, the sun <laughs> goes too far from our planet, everything will freeze. We will die again, right? Because of the distance, because of day and the night, the sun position to our planet is so perfect. That's why we can have perfect light. And our, this solar energy is so perfect, here or here, it doesn't matter. Because of that, our body has this perfect temperature, body temperature. And this is the base of our life, okay? But just because of temperature, we cannot live, and we need the water element too. And that's why the moon, the water is perfectly it's here, okay? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Of course, if you study biology, geology and life, these things, everything is so complex and so complicated, <laughs> right? So complicated. But at the same, same time, if you look in a very simple angle, everything also so simple, right? All this complicated, very sophisticated life and, you know, the, the nature, the plant, the humans, animals, we are all depending on the sun and one planet's energy, <laughs> sunlight. We are all depending on one energy. If that one is gone, and we are all dead, <laughs> right? And a very simple question. Same way, also we are depending on water, and water and sun. They have to keep the balance. Okay, that's called the balance of sun and moon. And I think this this is also the main theory in uh, in TCM in Chinese medicine, yin and the yang. You know, I like this theory, yin and the yang. It's the foundation of everything, base of our life. Okay. So here, white tigle and red tigle, why it's called the essence, essences, because this is the really the essence of our life, okay? And then we are not going to just stay saying, oh, this one produces heat, and this is the water, and we are balanced with sun and moon. And now we have to go more one step deeper. What is one step deeper? And now we have to know what is the nature of our mind, 
Okay? What is the meaning of our life and what is nature of our life? <coughs> mm -hmm. So what is the nature of our mind? Mm -hmm. huh? What? Nature. Yeah? It's supposed to be love and peace. Love and peace, that's good. What else? The nature of mind is? Clear light. Clear light, that's good. Who said bliss? That's good. Love consciousness. Love consciousness, what else? Luminous. Luminous. Light upon Awareness. emptiness. Awareness. Clarity upon emptiness. Light upon emptiness. Mm -hmm. What else? What do you think? Compassion. Luminous. Huh? Luminous. Luminous. Fernando, guapo. <laughs> la, la, la natura de la mente. La natura final. Uh, life. La vida. Yeah, good. Life. Viva la vida. <laughs> good points too, right? Life. Good what kind of life? life? What kind of life? We can say blissful life. <laughs> okay? So that's why the Tigle, I like this Tigle study. There's a one very famous Tibetan uh, book about uh, this uh, study of the, this subtle anatomy. It says, we were born with bliss, we live with bliss, we will die with bliss. Okay? I think this is the reason in, in Tibetan meditation, when we talk about meditation, they always talk about bliss, bliss, bliss. Actually, it says this is our nature, you know, we were born with the bliss. Right? Like when we were born, we are very, maybe, let's say, very calm and very happy babies. Cute newborn babies, you know. <laughs> Even we look like aliens. <laughs> the newborn baby is like aliens, right? Uh, little aliens, but, but they experience that bliss, you know? Okay? And you know what is the mantra of the bliss? Ah! <laughs> That's the mantra of bliss. They say, ah! We think they are crying, but they are having bliss. <laughs> okay? So we were born with bliss. It's something like, uh, how do you say? Tanche, innate. No, Tanche. Tanche. Tanche? Tanche. Innate. Oh, Lenche, 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 Lenche. Yeah, Lenche. Yeah, how do you translate? Uh, I, I will sometimes uh, together, mm -hmm. you know, co uh, coordinated or together. But Lenje uh, Dewa, that's orgasmic bliss. Orgasmic mm -hmm. bliss. Okay. It's like the bliss of melting so, into the universe. So we were born with uh, orgasmic bliss. We were born, okay, you make sure we were born with orgasmic bliss. That's why you said, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then the text says, we live with orgasmic bliss. I think that's very important. Do you understand? We have so many ideas. Oh, the, what is the nature of mind? It's this one, that one, many. But some, if we make something very simple, the nature of mind is joy. Joyness. Okay? Joy and happy. That's supposed to be the real nature of the mind. You know, it's a real human mind. It's just joy and happy. And so we have to keep this our pristine nature of the mind. It's a joy and a happy or orgasmic bliss. When you meditate, it comes up, right? And then this text says also, we will die with orgasmic bliss, right? So we are coming from the bliss, Deva Chembo, Mahasukha. We live with Mahasukha, we die with Mahasukha. But that's, I think that's why even with the Chulin, when we are holding the energy here, it says you meditate on the bliss, right? It's reminding us, this is the, our nature of our mind, the real nature of our mind. Oh, really nice. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Okay, like, okay, I give you a few seconds of meditation time. Close your eyes. Don't sit, don't sit in meditation posture. Don't sit, just stay how you're sitting. Don't change your posture. Close your eyes simply. Okay, close your eyes and check your feeling, how you feel. You're going to have only three feelings. 
happy feeling, unhappy and neutral. One is happy, one is just, just now and here, okay, the feeling. You feel something good or happy, or you feel something bad and unhappy, maybe you have some troubles in your mind, or you are kind of neutral. <clears throat> you are neutral like you, you know, not happy, nor sad, you know, <clears throat> no good, no bad. Italian answer, no good, no bad. Okay, your meditation is finished. <laughs> okay, just just uh, knowing your feeling. Who was happy? Who is happy? Who is happy? Okay, who is unhappy? Okay, only one. And who felt uh, neutral? Neutral, one, two, three, four. Neutral. Neutral, one, two, three. You're neutral, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But is it the happy or the unhappy? Neutral, neutral. 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 Oh, neutral, neutral. <laughs> 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 neutral means powerful emanation in Tibetan. <laughs> neutral. <laughs> Neutral. Neutral. Okay, how many neutrals? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. A lot of neutrals. <laughs> yeah, normally most of people, they feel neutral, most of people. But I think in Western psychology, if you feel neutral, you are already okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, you said, what you said is so interesting, you know um, that. Just one moment. But yeah. I call this neutral state people, I call it potato state. <laughs> potato, you're a potato. <laughs> not feeling good nor bad. Okay, for me, that's not okay. <laughs> you have to feel good, you have to push it up, okay? In any case, if you feel neutral state, neutral state, you have to receive more lama massage. After lama massage, you check your feeling, you feel a little bit high. <laughs> yeah? You know what I think by neutral? I think content. Yeah, naturally it's like you're in the middle, you know, middle. So it's, um, I'm just trying to describe that I felt like being neutral, feeling neutral is uh, the feeling of contentment. Feeling what? Contentment. If you oh, are no, no, then, then you are in the good I'm feeling. Yeah, you're good okay. Feeling. okay. <laughs> no, no, you're neutral. Not, uh, neutral is actually good. It means yeah. there's no yeah, pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that there is yeah, no yeah. neutral. You are not potato state. It's okay. You are free. You are free from potato state. <laughs> neutral is good. I know some people, they don't like this. You know, somebody told me, I hate when you say I'm a potato. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, but I'm sure you like to eat the potatoes. And he said, yes. Well, you know, in, 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 in America, then they say couch potato. Right. Mm -hmm. Couch potato means someone who watches television all day. Okay? Ah. And they just never exercise. And they don't walk around. <laughs> they have no endorphins. Right. Like couch right. potato. Okay. That's sort of negative thing. <laughs> said to be, from a health perspective. Mm -hmm. But no, I was thinking again that they say, you know, there's this thing about the human constant, the scientists have. Uh -huh. If there was a little more this or a little more that, then life wouldn't exist, you know. Mm -hmm. And what is really interesting is that 90,000 miles, millions of miles and thousands of miles, you know, the moon and the sun, but they look exactly the same size. That, that's quite a, they don't usually talk about that, but that is an amazing thing, actually. So the, the combination of distance and size perfectly matches, although there's huge difference mm -hmm. of distance and size. That's really interesting, actually. Yeah. Because, really interesting. yeah, because of collective karma. Yes, yes, must be, mm -hmm. must be. Okay, so I think, yeah, that's the, about Tigle, okay? I don't say so many things, but the really thing what that's we really need to know is, I that. our mind is always with Tigle, okay? So that's why I'm, our mind has a kind of a nature of clarity too. Our mind is clear, and our mind is kind of, uh, yeah, intelligent because of like the heat, the temperature, the red Tigle, okay? You know, we have uh, intelligence, we have wisdom, and this, 
okay? That part is the heat. But then the real the experience, the nature of mind itself, it's the bliss. So that's why that text says, Deva Chimbo Tang Cheba, Deva Chimbo Tang Mewa, Deva Chimbo Nang Bichua. And I think that's the main, uh, how do you say, information from a uh, main message from Tibetan Vajrayana teachings and meditations. You know, it doesn't matter, you do mantra, meditation, yoga, sadhana, whatever, but what, it, what had to be the result, you know, the unique result? You must feel joy. You must feel happy and kind of like this good feeling of bliss, blissful feeling. Okay, because then we are reaching our, our original state. That's called the yoga. You know, yoga, the word of yoga, today the, the translate as a union. So even you say union, we have to reunion our pristine state. You understand? We reunion ourselves. It's not we are reunion with God or we reunion with somebody else. Our pristine state is the blissful state. So if you do yoga and yoga, you, you reach this, your own nature, Christian state, and that's it. That means yoga, manager, achieving the true state, the real nature, okay? And so that's about the tigle. <clears throat> then of course, if you don't reach that tigle through meditation and yoga and these things, you can try that also with massage. You can try that with also maybe spa, and you know, using the physical body, to really increasing the good feeling in the body. Do you understand? And if you do any meditation, if you do any meditation, I told you, meditation is an inner alchemy. We have to transform our negative emotions, negative feelings, and so on. But the final result of any meditation, it have to be joy and bliss. Okay? Because at least we are experiencing or we are tasting what is the true nature of our self, okay? All meditations are designed to get that level, to get that level, right? That's why any meditation you do, sometimes, you know, you're sitting in an uncomfortable position, and then you breathe and meditate more and more, and then slowly you feel very good. Yeah? Even, you know, you're experiencing pain, like five minutes ago, and now you feel, don't feel pain. It's very nice and good feeling. Your mind is clear and calm, and you, you really feel the joy. You feel the joy. You feel the, you feel like the happiness, right? Like Italian says, "La vita è bella." <laughs> <laughs> no. Right? Oh. You la feel dolce like vita. you are. Huh? Sometimes la dolce vita. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Right? Yeah, you feel like. Yeah, you need to fill your life. Actually, what is the life? It's the good life, right? The beautiful life. Okay, good. I think that part is very important. So that's why, of course, some meditation says, oh, don't worry about your physical sensations, good sensations, bad sensations. Ignore, 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 ignore. I think too much ignoring is not good. But also it's not good to say, okay, I, I want to have this good feeling. I want it, you know, you are very fixed, the fixation and expectation, saying, I want to please, I want to please, I want to please. And you are forcing yourself to say, I want to have orgasm, I want to have orgasm, I want to have <laughs> orgasm. Right? You want to do so much, you, all your muscles are contracted, you can't have orgasm. <laughs> Something like that. So that's why I, I like this uh, one very famous Indian yogi, Diloba. Dilop has this uh, teaching. He says, have a mind open to everything. Okay, he says, have a mind open to everything and attached to nothing. <clears throat> very nice teaching. Very, very nice teaching. I like that. But if we close our mind, not opening is like we are, we are conditioning ourselves. It's like a self-stress, right? We, you know, we, we, our mind somehow it's a free. I think we are talking about the political freedom, you know, cultural freedom. We talk so many different kinds of freedoms, different levels of freedoms. But I think the most uh, greatest freedom is our inner freedom, you know. 
mentally we think free. You know, we don't fight between Hinduism, Buddhism. We don't fight with religions. We don't fight uh, cultural nationalism. This, do you understand? It's inside for us. We are free. These things, right? You see, sometimes there are some spiritual fights. You know, the schools they are fighting each other. This is the better one. That's the worse one. Spiritual, what do you call? Conflicts. And if you are involved, you know, it disturbs you and this and that. Once you are free from this, you, how do you say, you can really enjoy that kind of freedom. Do you understand? And then you look at other people, they are involved in these things, they are fighting. Mentally fighting, emotionally fighting, spiritually fighting. You see, it's just ridiculous, you know. <clears throat> right? So I think really the, this inner freedom, the inner freedom, it's so easy to achieve. Okay? We don't need to go for a protesting, <laughs> fighting, and uh, you know, this and that. Just you meditate and you feel this, your mind is open to everything, open to anything. Not conflicting, right? No conditions, you are free from everything. You, you just make it by yourself. That's why Buddha says, I show you the way, but you have to walk. <laughs> Buddha said, I can't push you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pull. He said, I'm not pushing you, pulling you, I just show you the way and you go by yourself. Right? So what I think what Buddha showed us is like this, the, how do you say, this really, really like vast freedom, our inner freedom. Right? And your mind is open to everything, connected to everything. Alright? And then there's no problem because you are not attached to anything. You're not saying, oh, this is mine, I grab this, I hold this, right? There's no this tension and no blockage. Otherwise, oh, this is mine, I take it, I grab it, you hold. And that's the problem, right? Mm. So um, I'm sure it takes time for meditating like this. That's why I like one Jie uh, Tsongkhapa's uh, expression. Damgar tam chan chikta charwa tam, roala. No. Damgar tam chan chikta charwa tam. So when Jetongaba he says, you know, at the end, he, of course, he was very Great. good with meditation these days. He said, at the end, all kind of teachings and methods, you see they are, they are just one. Oh, yeah. They're not many, you many, many, no, no, many no. methods. They are just one. If you see everything in one, it means you are free from conflict. That's right. Okay, and then also you don't see the conflict between Buddhism, Christian, Muslims, all these things, right? You are free, all in one, different teachings, this. But in order to reach that, you, we really have to open our mind and embrace that universal freedom. Okay, so that's about, uh, yeah, that's about Tigle. So when we talk Tigle, Tigle is connected, the mind, you know? What's the nature of the tigle? That's the nature of mind. What's the nature of mind? That's the nature of the tigle. So it's a clarity and the bliss. Mm. The heat, the, the heat and the bliss. So the, the heat represents the clarity. It's something very clear, like consciousness, conscious. Something clear, we can see, we can study, we can memorize, you know, we have this perfect consciousness and it is blissful. There's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no struggling, there's no sickness, there's no blockage. It's free from everything, freedom. Okay? Good? Okay. My talk is finished now. <laughs> but quickly I need to give you the, uh, the mantra for blessing the, the medicines. We have 10 minutes. Did you write them? Oh, th there is the mantra. Can you write it down? Om Sarva Buddha Dakini Hari Nisa Amrita Sidi Hum. Okay, Om, you know, Om is the sound of the universe. Uh, Sarva means all, everything. Buddha means Buddha, you know, awakened. So all awakened Buddha. And Dakini, it's interesting. Dakini is like more female Buddhas. Okay. And Longja, I told you yesterday, the Tummo, the fire is connected more feminine. And also rejuvenation, the flowers, they have more like feminine energy. Okay? <laughs> so, 
Men, you know, the men, you don't eat too much this uh, flour, uh, flour children. Otherwise, you become like this. Ah, <laughs> you become like a flower. <laughs> I'm a flower. So Dakini is this enlightened, okay? Buddha Dakini means enlightened feminine energy. So enlightened feminine energy is connected with long life, uh, rejuvenation, beauty, joy, happiness, and all these things, okay? That's why it's called Buddha Dakini. Sarva Buddha Dakini means all enlightened Dakinis. And then uh, Hari Nisa, especially four types of Dakinis. Hari Nisa, water, earth, fire, wind. The, the, the pure essence, you know, the Dakini energy from the four elements, okay? Hari Nisa. Sarva Dakini, Hari Nisa, then Amrita, you know what Amrita means? Nectar, okay? Immortal nectar. And the Siddhi means? Achieve. Achieve or Attain, blessing. Attain, obtain. Mm -hmm. Or blessing. Siddhi. Mm -hmm. Siddhi. Amrita, so You attain immortal. the deathlessness. Uh -huh. Amrita is the deathless. No death. Yeah. Immortals, uh, blessing. Hung means give to me, transmit to me. Okay, hung has many meanings. One is give to me, like bless me. Okay, immortal energy of all Dakinis, enlightened Dakinis coming into me. Or hung also means destroying the negativities. If there are any, how do you say, obstacles for your health, uh, you know, disease or whatever, car accidents, uh, if there are any ob obstacles for your longevity and good health, that's called the, uh, uh, how do you say, mara, like obstacles, and when you say hung, and destroy these things. So that's why also it's kind of protection, okay? All right, so we will recite that for 21 times. Uh, can you bring the flowers to put in here? Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it right there. Sorry, I'm asking the Dakini to do everything. <laughs> That's a very bad karma. When you ask ladies to do things. All right, so here we have the, do you remember the flowers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay, our flowers now mixed with uh, honey. So uh, as I told you, some of you might like to eat also ghee, purified <coughs> butter. You can add ghee too if you want. All right, and now, so, after the blessing with mantra, uh, I think you can get one for each, and you can take this morning early, okay? And this will be your breakfast. I hope it will last for one or two weeks, breakfast. In the morning, you eat only this one, and two glass of warm water, and no regular food, okay? All right, so do you remember the name? What's the name of this? How you can say in Chinese, the flower rejuvenation? Translate, flower rejuvenation. Rejuvenation is what? Essence, Jin is essence. Fuasi, <coughs> is flower, fuasi. Yeah. In Taoism, they have similar concept, you know? Right, they have the... the exact, the, immortal the, pills, how do you call it? Um, Chang Sheng Bu Lao. Uh, Chang Sheng Bu Lao, How do you say in Spanish? The flora, flora del rejuvenation? The re flower, rejuvenation flower. <coughs> <laughs> what language is that? Espanol, Espanol. Oh, Espanol. The flor, flor del rejuvenimentos. 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 Ruski kak? Samoazenia svetkami? Svetok. Svetkami. Ah, svetkami. Uh-huh. Okay. And Dutch, what do you say? German. I don't know Dutch. German. German. Okay. <laughs> In Hindi, how you can say? 
Pushpa Kumara Bhuta. Pushpa Kumara Bhuta. Pushpa Kumara Bhuta. Ah, Kumara is young, yeah? Yeah, Kumara Bhuta. Pushpa Kumara Bhuta. Okay, remember this name, Netop Chullin, Tibetan name. Netop Chullin, okay? I think we can call it uh, rejuvenation flowers, yeah? In English, sure. which one is better? Sure, flower rejuvenation, yeah. Okay, flower rejuvenation. Flower essence rejuvenation, maybe. Flower essence rejuvenation. Okay, so I'm going to put it here. <laughs> this, uh, this is called the, the mandala of rejuvenation, okay? Mandala of rejuvenation. So there are four colors and four directions representing what? Hari Nisa, four elements. Hari Nisa. Everyone should start repeating that. Okay. So now we recite the mantra. We will recite the mantra. Imagine like millions of Dakinis coming here and bless all our flowers. Okay? We do for 21 times and then the flower is blessed and then you can eat it. Do, do we want to move that to center stage so everybody can see it? Oh, do that. Yeah, 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 we can put it here. Yeah. Okay, let's chant together. Om Sattva Buddha Dagani Hari Nisa Amrita Amrita Siddhi Om Sattva Buddha Dagani Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Sattva Buddha Dagani Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Can you lead it once slowly for us? Hare Nisa, Amrita Siddhi Om. Okay, let's come on, let's go. Om Sarva Buddha. Om Sarva Buddha. Dakini Hare Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Om. Om Sarva Buddha. Om Sarva Buddha. Dakini Hare Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Om. Om Sarva Buddha. Dakini Hare Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Om. Om Sarva Buddha. Dakini Hare Nisa. Om Sarva Buddha Dakini Hari Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Hum. Om Sarva Buddha Dakini Hari Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Hum. Amrita Siddhi Hum. Amrita Siddhi Hum. Om Sarva Buddha Dakini Hari Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Hum. Come on. Om Sarva Buddha Dakini Hari Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Hum. Om Sarva Buddha Dakini Hari Nisa. Amrita Siddhi Hum. Om Sarva Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Om Sarva Buddha Dagini Hari Nisa Amrita Siddhi Om Okay, so if you want in future, uh, you can just uh, do mental chanting, okay? Now we did the verbal chanting, but normally mental chanting is more powerful. Mm -hmm. You memorize this mantra, okay, you don't say this verbally, but mentally say it, and then imagine the light is coming from the universe, dissolves in your medicine. Okay, meditation is important, eh, when blessing the herbs, do you understand? Mantras we are calling the Dakinis, but <coughs> when you meditate, it, then it's more effective. So it's like, uh, uh, how do you say, when you put your mind in the herbs and the medicine, so that's effective, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it's not you put only your mind, so your mind takes the energy. What? It's okay. You're muted. Oh, really? 
That's why they say murmuring. When you meditate with mantra, you shouldn't be loud voice, but you learn it with a loud voice. I think it's the battery. Huh? It's working now. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Om ye dharma hetu tapava hetu tisham tatagata yavada tisham jayuni rudu evam bhadi mahasamani svaha Om ye dharma hetu tapava hetu tisham tatagata yavada tisham jayuni rudu evam bhadi mahasamani svaha Om ye dharma hetu tapava hetu tisham tatagata yavada that's a wonderful okay, thing. Any, what if they get, I have a present for you. Any questions? This is the Gulama. Ah, Gulama. With the Tokama Tomeki, Deva, and the Gelsep Jeki, Gator Bacheki, Gelsep Jeki, the Deva. Datik, say it. Gulama Datik. I thought you might like that. That's for your library. It's not in Italian. You also have it in Tibetan, but you might enjoy it. Okay, any questions? Questions? You know how to take it, yeah? That's a good idea yeah. since I don't have a pen. In the morning. 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 the morning. In 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 the Half gi and then. How's your back? It's okay? Anyway, I want to thank Suchen for teaching. Suchen for teaching many people. Very nice. Yes, yes, exactly. I have a question that we can ask. Everyone got it? Everyone got it? I have a question. Who didn't get it? Before everyone leaves, um, we got one question, um, and then we'd like to do a group photo. Oh, it's a question about the claw um, massage. Yeah. You know, so you said um, that points. Give me the book. The Mondo. The location of the law would be sensitive depending on where the moon is at the moment. Yes. So let's say the moon is full and the crown is going to be more sensitive. Is yes, that yes. during the full moon? Would you want to concentrate during those parts? Okay, la massage uh, during the full moon lies everywhere. Oh. <laughs> the main location is here, but la goes everywhere. Okay. Is that good or bad? Okay, I'll show you something. I just explained to you. Okay, la massage is like. So la massage is like this, you know that? Every day the light goes here, 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 like this, a special point. But the full moon is like this. Oh. So full moon is, it's the main la energy is here, but entire your body is full of light, okay? That's why the full moon and the new moon here is the best day for la massage. Mm -hmm. You can do every day if you want, or you can choose the, the, the la point. But if you can do like a twice, uh, normally you need like twice a uh, month. So new moon and the full moon. If you do la massage, then a whole month you're okay. You are young and happy. Okay, good. This is new moon. You see new moon? Imagine the water is your body, and this is la energy, full of light, okay? This is new moon, and this is full moon. And then other days are going like this. But then another thing is, on the la locations, you should avoid uh, invasive therapies. You know, putting needles, acupunctures, or platelet, you know, venesection, these things. Do you understand? 
So uh, the best is uh, and, um, on iPhone, you can download one Tibetan app. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Tibetan calendar. So that shows every day exact the Tibetan dates, OK? Today is 24th. Yeah, Tibetan calendar. Today is Tibetan, Tibetan uh, 24th. Tomorrow is Dakini day. Yeah, so this Tibetan Rick calendar, this Tibetan calendar, it's called. It's through the Rigpo community. Um, if you go online and go in your app store and type in Rigpo or Tibetan astrology you can calendar, download it. it should come up. Well, it just should say 20 or 24. Today is 24. So where is the lab? Yeah, yeah. If you look in the book, I think here about the light explanation. Not two at the same time, right? It's only right side. Okay. If you have no, you know, like yesterday when we did it, it took about uh, twenty to thirty minutes, right, for, per person. But if you do one side first, then other side like this, it take about one hour. It depends on your time. I have to do yesterday we did together because that you know takes less time. Okay. But normally you do one by one, and then it takes yeah it takes more time. Are the syllables in that book? Yeah, yeah. Syllables in the book. Uh, locations are also in the book. Ah, uh, yeah, we have a CD too. And uh, who is ordering for the shop? Um, we'll talk to Andy. Where is the lab? Where is the lab? So the CD is not here now. Yes, it's not. So if you get this CD, you just to play the CD. You don't play it. This explanation is there too. So here, yeah, here the locations and syllables. Or if you really want to see, ah, you have this our point book, yeah. Yeah. In the point book, it's very clear everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very clear. You know, there is uh, an, uh, one of my new book, it's called the Soaripa Points. You can get it here. So, yeah, Soaripa Points book, and you check in there, everything is very clear. Very uh, well. That's amazing. Oh, it's that's so a great nice. book. Yeah. 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 Points. Yeah, yeah. It's in the gift shop. It's a new book. Okay, so Suchin asked me to be uh, giving the long reading transmission for Yuto's and Mondo practice. I'm going to read it. You just listen, okay? Yes. It, it takes maybe five minutes. Guru, yeah. Ready, <laughs> 